All right, welcome. Uh, my name is Doug Powers. I am the director of the 2019 Art Hamlet. And I'm joined tonight by uh, Glenn Dobbs, who is the artistic director of Artemis. Hello, Glenn. Right. And uh, Brian Hartz, who played Hamlet in the production that you are about to watch. Good to see you both. Hi. <laughs> right. It's 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 nice to see you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been a minute. It has. It has been well, like uh, six or seven weeks, you know, but who's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. We're, um, everybody, I think. Yeah, I think pretty much. Can... So let me start with you, Glenn. Give us the, the sort of elevator speech about Bardfest, if you would, just so people know what we're talking about. Bardfest uh, started uh, when I was uh, uh, going to IRT for a costume sale. And I ran into a friend of mine there and we were talking about Shakespeare. And uh, he said, uh, what this town needs is a good festival. And it was just like an offhand kind of comment. And I went away and went, hmm, that's an interesting idea. And uh, that led to a conversation with a friend and another friend and another person and contacts that I particularly had. And we came up with this idea is could we do uh, a very intimate Shakespeare experience where uh, Hamlet, if you will, is right in front of you, just not, not at a stadium or in a, in a giant theater. Uh, and could we do it in rotation? Could we do kind of a minimalistic type of set where, where shows are rotated through and you can see three or four full Shakespeare productions all in two to three weekends? And that's what we started uh, six or seven years ago. We started at a small theater in Carmel. Uh, we spent a couple of years there and then we moved to Mass Ave and we expanded our operation to uh, uh, three different theaters. And uh, we're now uh, going into this year, we were going to be at five different theaters, uh, but of course the pandemic uh, changed that. Um, so- uh, In we, zero theaters. <laughs> yeah, uh, our first year, uh, we had about 340 people who came to the shows. Uh, last year we had uh, 1,200. Uh, so uh, it was a nice growth. Um, we also added a youth program um, a couple of years ago, which has been phenomenally successful. And um, we are now, I can say, the largest Shakespeare festival in Indiana, uh, which is um, pretty decent. If, and, um, you know, uh, one of the big things that happened for us that we, I was kind of excited about was a couple of years ago, I was doing some press and I was on uh, one of the local TV stations and uh, they said, uh, Indianapolis's Shakespeare Festival has returned, and I went, oh, we've arrived. <laughs> you know, and so it was a nice piece of stuff. And so that's how Bardfest got started, and our brand is a professional, intimate theater, up close, personal, uh, where you get to see the stories like you have never really get to see them before, experience them before in a very intimate, raw fashion. And that's what we do. That's the elevator speech. Oh, building, but fine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> in the Burj Khalifa. That's right. <laughs> I do no, talk a lot. I do talk a lot. That's, I think my ears know, popped. We get, yeah, we get, we got time to fill, so it's fine. Um, so this is is part of uh, Bardfest uh, launching a YouTube channel. And what uh, prompted that decision? Well, the prompted that division, I had this friend named Doug Powers uh, who uh, sent me a note saying we ought to do a YouTube channel. And, I have a friend and, named Doug Powers. Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, oh, I, had, uh, I had in a drawer um, seven or eight high quality videos of various productions from the years. Uh, we usually don't film every year, mostly because of budget, because plays are a different medium than film and, and they don't really translate real well into the film most of the time. But um, Doug kind of lit a fire in me and, and I think by that afternoon I had the thing up and, and at least six films up, you know, with it. Uh, the, uh, so now we're up to like 12, 13 different films uh, that are on the YouTube channel and uh, I'll include it in the link uh, to the discussion of, of, of this particular Film and we're going to add this to it. So, um, so uh, and since there since there isn't going to be an in-person broadcast this year, yeah, wherever Doug is, uh, I want yeah. to thank him for the idea. I'll, you know, uh, I'll, I'll let him know. I'll pass it along. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, 
What was behind the decision to do Hamlet in 2019? Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this was the decision to do Hamlet. This fellow here, Brian, was walking out with his lovely wife, and um, uh, I accosted him on the sidewalk outside of the French Theater, and I said, "It's time to do." Yeah, that was after one of the one of the actually actually that, that was that was the night that we went to see uh, the Merchant of Venice, right? Yes, uh, and yes. Bart which I directed. Yeah. And I said, "It's time. It's time to do Hamlet, and uh, it's time for you to do this." And he goes, "Oh, no, his wife's kicking me." His wife said, "Oh, it's time, you know, type of thing." And he's uh, Brian won't tell you this, but he's sort of the local Daniel Day Lewis. You know, very selective about his projects and things, and, and you know, <laughs> you know, his agent won't return your call and all this crap. And uh, the uh, and he, I said, "I've got the guy to do it for you." And then after that conversation, I went and talked to Doug, <laughs> and. and uh, said, Doug, it's time to do Hamlet. He goes, no, I can't, it's too big. I, I, it's, it's beyond me, it's everything. And I, said, and I responded to him in a gentle counseling uh, fashion, bullshit, you're, you're, it's ready for you and you're, you're the right guy. And I put both of you together and then that's the only credit I take for the show and everything else is you. And uh, so that's, that's what happened. Yes, well, I mean, Brian and I have actually known each other for a long time because in fact we met and he directed me in a production of Romeo and Juliet. That's, that's how we... Well, 17 we years ago, I think. Yeah. Something no, like that. Something like that. So in this particular combo, this particular... Right. Combo, yes. Because so, whenever so, I'm so. at a Bard Fest, I'm always thinking about next year's Bard Fest. You know, you, you know this year's Bard right. Fest is done. And so mm -hmm. I'm always thinking about next year. And so when I see people in the lobby and in the thing, <laughs> and I start accosting them and saying, it's time, it's time, it's time. And uh, now I've got a nice little laundry list of directors I can call on. And, uh, the, uh, but this show was the show of the 2019 season. And I say that even though I directed a show of the 2019 season, so I swallowed some while <laughs> while saying that. Uh, with it. But this was the That's show. That's impressive. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Bard Fest 2022, King John, all I'm saying. Uh, Got to throw that out there every time I get, every time I get the chance. So to, to everybody, um, who's your favorite Hamlet of all time? My favorite? Yeah. I'll let, I'll, Brian, Brian, I've been talking too much. Who's your favorite Hamlet? Boy, that's a, ugh, that's a very difficult question. I know. Uh, it, 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 more difficult than you might think. I mean, you, you'd think I'd have a you know, list of the top five, uh, right, 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 ready to, uh, to spout off the top of my head. But you know, the, the, the thing about Hamlets is that, that, that no two Hamlets are alike. Everyone is, is, is entirely different. And I, I've seen a couple that I just absolutely did not like. Um, well, that's my next but, question. Uh, well, okay. Well, I'll, I'll save that one. Then. Um, <laughs> but, uh, boy. Um, And now suddenly I'm drawing a blank on a, on, on a bunch of the, uh, I, I saw like, I, I think I watched no fewer than like seven or eight different versions of, uh, both, uh, of, of Hamlet um, as I was, uh, as I was preparing uh, for this. Um, yeah, boy, I, I wish, uh, ah. <laughs> Which, all right. All I wish you'd right. ask me another time. You know, the, the funny thing is, I, I've, I've thought about a lot about Hamlet on film, uh, but then again, I've, I've seen you know uh, film films of Hamlet and then filmed stage uh, productions uh, of Hamlet, um, which uh, you know, not quite the same animal. I, I still uh, of the Hamlet films that were made for film, um, I, I still actually think the Olivier holds up. Um, strangely enough, um, hmm. just because he very clearly adapted it for the medium of film uh and True. while the acting style is a little um dated in parts and uh you know certainly uh, olivier makes a lot of choices that i would not make and in fact did not make um right. as hamlet uh you know i uh, i i gotta admire the, uh, the the sheer cinematic uh skill of that um but uh you know in terms of uh in terms of more recent hamlets um Well, actually, well, I guess it's not terribly recent, but I, I did have the privilege of, uh, of locating the Kevin Klein uh, Hamlet, uh, which I think was uh, I don't know, early '90s. Yeah. Um, with uh, you know, Diane Venora was Ophelia in that one, um, and uh, Dana Ivey as uh, as Gertrude. Um, really, uh, you know, quite uh, 
quite remarkable, extremely dynamic uh, performance on the on the part of Kevin Klein, um, you know, hometown, you know, uh, not hometown, but the home state uh, guy. Got to got to give a shout out to uh, to Kevin, uh, who never finished at Indiana University, but the, but the, they'll they'll never tell you that part. Um, so uh, you know, ask ask me again, and I'll uh, I'll, I'll have probably a better uh, uh, answer. Uh, Right. That's, that's, oh, Adrian Lester. Adrian Lester. That's uh, that's the one I, I. Okay, my. Um, Adrian Lester uh, played Hamlet in the I think 2003 Peter Brook uh, production. Mm -hmm. I can't remember if it was for the RSC or the National. Um, RSC, but, uh, I think. But yeah, they, his was probably the together. most in, intimate and deeply mm -hmm. felt Hamlet I have ever seen. Um, very quiet, but he's the kind of actor who forces you to lean in when he's being quiet, um, and uh, and I really appreciate that. Um, really, I, I I could not have done his version of Hamlet, nor would I you know, I would ever, ever have tried. Um, but uh, really, passionately, deeply felt. Uh, anyway, I've really? sucked up a lot of uh, airtime uh, on this, and and I want to flip it back to you, Doug, because um, I know you've got some opinions on this. Well, yeah, um, I think really my, my favorite Hamlet would have to be uh, a sort of amalgam of lots of different ones because they've all got pieces here and there that, that I like and some other pieces that are like, yeah, it's not to my taste. Um, but I think overall of the film versions and things that, that I know we both were gorging ourselves on in the early part of our process. Um, I still think one of my favorites has to be the Campbell Scott of all time. I think he did a really, really nice job of it. You never got to see that one, did you? I, I never did. It like it like went off yeah. streaming like right yeah. after you saw it, and I tried <laughs> to hunt it down, and it was nowhere to be found. Uh, yeah. So one day I will see the Campbell Scott version. Campbell Scott, a fantastic actor, George C. Scott's son. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've you've probably seen him in one or two things, uh, even if you weren't aware of it. Um, yeah, very. Uh, very cool actor, very understated actor, which I really appreciate because I'm Wait. not an understated actor. <laughs> How about you, Glenn? Uh, it's interesting that you should say that, and I think both of you would probably agree with this. When you when you do Hamlet, and and as you guys know, I I did it two or three years ago. The um, your ham you can do Merchant of Venice and it's a Merchant of Venice show, but Hamlet is your Hamlet actor. You build you build your show around your Hamlet. If you have a, yes. a quiet Hamlet, then it's a then that's the show you build. If it's a strong Hamlet, you know, a big powerful Hamlet, uh, then that's the show you build. And so you never see Hamlet, RSC's Hamlet, it's it's Ad it's Adrian Lester's Hamlet. It's it's uh, Mel Gibson's Hamlet, it's Kenneth Branagh's Hamlet. Uh, it's uh, John Gielgud's Hamlet. Uh, it's Richard Burton's Hamlet uh, with it. Uh, and one of the other things I remember when I was directing the show, and I think Doug, you probably felt this way too, is so many people have opinions about Hamlet that the second you make a choice, somebody's not going to like it uh, because they see it a little differently. That's what's so wonderful about Hamlet. Uh, there's so many very different ways uh, to go about it. Uh, most books that I read tell you that John Gielgud is the quintessential, his version of Hamlet is the defining Hamlet for the 20th century. Uh, I've seen bits and pieces of the video of that. It's a very, you know, lots how, of- How old are these books that you read? <laughs> uh, right. Well, he did say 20th century. So. Well, okay, fair enough, fair enough. 20th century. I mean, yeah, um, he, did, he did kind of set the bar for a long, long, did, long time. He set the bar for sure. I. I, I've been a Kenneth Branagh fan forever. I like Kenneth Branagh. I like the way he delivers his lines. There's a wonderful natural quality to it. I thought it was a, a wonderful performance. Um, and here, you're going to laugh at me a little bit, but I, I actually enjoyed the Mel Gibson Hamlet. I thought the, 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 the pace of it, I enjoyed. I enjoyed seeing it set up in that particular way. Uh, I didn't think he did a bad job uh, with it at all. Um, Neither did I. Honestly, yeah. the, the Gibson Hamlet was the first one I ever saw. Yeah, me too. Um, yeah, which, uh, before, I, before I think I ever read the play. Um, yeah, and I, under, and I understood it. I, I, I understood it. I understood the story. 
does he have the subtleties uh, that a Gilbert or an Olivier or something <laughs> that did? No. Uh, my problem with Olivier is Olivier made a choice that he would do all of his soliloquies as, you know, thoughts, thought bubbles, you know, type of thing versus actually performing them. And that was a choice he made, but it was, uh, I found it kind of dull. You know? Definitely not a choice I would make. Yeah. Or did yeah, but I think I made that point already. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So it's, but his physicality was extreme. You know, he's a, a very physical Hamlet, uh, for sure. Yeah. We're talking, talking Gibson or Olivier? Olivier. Oh, okay. Both well, they both are oh, actually really? in, their, in, their, in their own ways. Yeah. Um, yeah. And if you yeah. kind of look at Mel Gibson without the current thing he is right. and right. what he was back then, you know, oh, yeah. back then it, was, it was great. People thought Zeffirelli was nuts for casting him, but he he acquitted himself awfully well. And you know the incredible supporting cast uh, oh, sure yeah. didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay, least favorite Hamlet. That's a very loaded question. Hopefully, uh, Nicole oh, Williamson, uh, hands down. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Nicole, Nicole Williamson. Nicole Williamson. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, also known as mention, Merlin from Excalibur. Um, yeah, I uh, forgot to mention, I, I, I super enjoyed Kevin Klein. He's like my, him and, yeah, really yeah, I just love him, watching him breathe. <laughs> He's just a great actor. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a, a one that, I guess Ethan Hawke, I didn't like that particular mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Yeah. It was a little bit too angsty, you know, with it. Well, I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how much of that to put on Ethan's shoulders. Is that uh, that 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 film in general was a bit ill-advised? Although a, a really strong supporting cast in that one too. <laughs> whoever you know, whoever had the idea to cast Bill Murray as Polonius, you know, deserved uh, what they, whatever they got for casting that. But anyway, um, God, I, I totally forgot about the Ethan Hawke cameo until you just mentioned it. It's I think pretty I forgettable. Think it's probably forgettable. scrubbed it from my memory. Yeah. Well, for my least favorite, I would I, this one is, is much easier for me. Um, <laughs> I have to go with Alex Hyde White. Uh, yeah, you haven't seen his Hamlet, I guarantee it. Because uh, <laughs> he did a film called Three Days of Hamlet. And when he was 53, he decided he had always wanted to play Hamlet, never had the chance. He, by the way, is the son of Wilfred Hyde White, who played Colonel Pickering in the film of My Fair Lady. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And his father liked all the comedic stuff and really didn't like the classics. So after his father died, he decided, darn it, I'm going to do my Hamlet. And he got a theater in LA that he could rent for three days. And he got Stephanie Powers to play Gertrude. No kidding. And just a smattering of other actors, most of whom I had. I mean, she was in Um, LA and probably didn't have a lot to do. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, Not since the 80s. and, and so they put together Hamlet in three days. And it is, I mean, you don't see the whole thing because it's a documentary about process. And so you see snippets, but it's pretty terrible. He had no business doing it. I forgot one Hamlet. Um, oh, his name slips me. Uh, he's so famous as an actor. The BBC mm-hmm. Hamlet. Um, You're talking about David Tennant? No, no, no. That was RSC. Um, oh. Derek Jacobi? I hate Eric Jacoby's Hamlet. I hate the Hamlet. Wow. Uh, wow. The, uh, wow. Okay. Oh, no, I, I did. I did because he was so effeminate. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, the he just was, he 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 just was so. He's such a giant of an actor, you know. With it, and I've seen him do such a volcanic kind of things, and I thought. Man, you're just a pushover, you know. It just, I, I, you just. Oh, you know, I, I wanted. This is going to be controversial, but you got me going now. Um, one of my favorite current actors is Benedict Cumberbatch. So, with great anticipation, I went to the Benedict Cumberbatch National Theater uh, when it played here in uh, uh, Indy to watch his Hamlet. When they did it in like with the, the the live movie theater broadcasting. It was no, it was awful. He just cries. He just cries in every scene. He just breaks down and constantly is just, you know, that's his go-to move. And and I'm just, it was it was just terrible. And and he got such <laughs> rage about it. Um, he, he opens the show with to be or not to be. They they that's the that's how he opens the monologue. And then to show the collapse 
I, I'm not making this up, to show the collapse of the empire. You know, the Norwegians are invading, uh, the uh, uh, Fortinbras is coming, and so the, the, the big house is collapsing. So they pour in all of this coal and soot into the stage to where it's all over the stage and flowing over. So here's, here's uh, Hamlet coming in and trying to, to move aside enough soot so they can have a fight. It, it, and stuff was stuck to their faces and they, I have no idea where the art direction of this thing went. It was, you just sat there and it was awful. And it just got, yeah, that's my least favorite. That was my least favorite. We'll see if that can can't come. remember his oh, full that. name. Uh, it was the RSC Hamlet uh, that they filmed most recently. Uh, David Tennant? Pa Papa, Papa, like the two A's. I can't remember his name. Anyway. I just know really Cumberbatch can do it. I just went, oh man, stop <laughs> crying. <laughs> you know, it just, anyway. <laughs> Throw to earth this unprevailing woe. Yeah. Um, so, Brian, you've wanted to play him like, most of your adult life, as I um, Yes, yeah. 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 I so, think, what, I first, think... what first drew you to it? Well, like I said, actually, I think, I think the first version I saw of it was. Um, was that Mel Gibson version? And like I said, it was just, it was on TV one day and my dad was like, oh, you gotta watch this. Um, and uh, so uh, we sat down and watched it together and I I, I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, and, uh, you know, just the, this is an absolutely uh, compelling, you know, gripping story. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know, Zeffirelli's uh, film, while it, uh, it, it uh, chops the, uh, you know, the script up and re rearranges it in, in uh, some nonsensical uh, uh, beats, uh, <laughs> nevertheless, is uh, extremely accessible. Uh, and, um, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I found it compelling uh, ever since. And, uh, and then my senior year of high school, um, Dr. Diane Hamstra, fantastic AP English teacher, um, we spent a good long time uh, dissecting like every scene of that play. You know, the good old paperback Folger Shakespeare Library. Uh, I edition. should thank him. What's that? I should thank your professor. <laughs> uh, her, Diane Hamster. Oh, um, uh, and um, boy, we, uh, we 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 analyzed that. Uh, you know, nine ways a Sunday. Um, and uh, you know, just getting that deep into the text, just like elbow deep in, <laughs> in all this uh you know delicious language and uh the the psychological complexity of it um you know i, I credit her not only with that but with you know eventually becoming an english major in college too because of the, the sheer joy of diving into the text like that um but also i mean you know who doesn't want to do some of the most famous speeches in the english language who doesn't want to do uh you know a killer sword fight um <laughs> Uh, and, and, and all of that, um, you, know, you know, tackle uh, that kind of material. Um, a little bit of everything, for sure. A, a little of everything. Uh, funny, funny enough, I think the second version of Hamlet I saw was, in fact, the Nicole Williamson version, because my dad like, oh, ordered the VHS off. of that from some catalog, um, and we sat down and watched it. And, what, what, who, I mean, yeah. this guy was in his mid-40s and bald, and, uh, you know, which is not, you know, I mean, I've seen Hamlets of all shapes, sizes, physical descriptions. Um, you know, but uh, but but then you know, chewing the uh, chewing the scenery, spitting it out, then uh, you know, chewing some more of it. Um, just uh, you know, could not could not have had a worse time. You know, <laughs> watching Hamlet. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, so my my uh, my opinions were formed uh, very strongly very early on, uh, you know about uh, about the role, and um, you know I uh, I've had a couple of different opportunities to participate in different productions. I was uh, very nearly in a production in 2015 uh, with uh, acting up productions of Brian Lafke, which Doug Powers was in, uh, playing Claudius, and uh, rather excellently at that uh, with the wonderful Lauren Brigham playing Hamlet. Um, Oh. I was to have played Laertes, but that was also right around the time that my daughter was born. So, like, literally, like, the show weekends were, you know, overlapping with her due date. So, uh, you know, family prevailed, and rightly so. Um, but, uh, and so, uh, you know, when the opportunity came around again, uh, well, my immediate, my immediate retort to, uh, to Glenn when he, uh, 
collared me outside uh, Merchant Venice was, well, I'm too old now. Because uh, <laughs> I remember what I told a, you. Uh, I I don't actually remember what you told me at the time. Um, oh shit. Oh, well, all right then. Um, no, I mean, no, seriously. <laughs> you played it, you played well. Uh, you, you, you got, uh, I don't need to list your attributes. You know, it was time. It was time for, and, and, and the other thing that's important to understand for, from my perspective, from both of you guys, is as I'm trying to build this particular festival, and I thought it was really, I had somebody pitch me Hamlet earlier. And I said, no, because we need to have the right structure for it. We need to have the right people in place. We need to grow enough to be able to, to try to tackle Hamlet to at least do a reasonable job, you know, with it. And um, I had you <laughs> had you in mind. At least reasonable. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm saying, no, I, I, no. I'm that bar. I think we met the reasonable bar. No, no, I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> no, I, I, I want to be able to say that we, Look, all of us went and saw the acting up production. And uh, I took that uh, when I did my 2017 show and I tried to say, I'm gonna meet that or exceed it. That was my, that was my goal. And I wanted to do the same uh, with uh, uh, this one. I wanted to meet or exceed that particular production uh, in, given the fact that that was an outdoor show and this is a, this is a more intimate type show. Uh, that we were able to put on a quality performance with not just Hamlet, but the entire cast, you know, was able to deliver the story. And I felt like as I was coming out of the theater during that particular time, I'd had my eye on you for a couple of years for doing that, ever since I saw you do that time in speech, uh, and had been sort of casting-wise stalking you <laughs> and, uh, the, uh, to see if I could finally get the time. And then I knew once I could get Doug and in, in, in the particular position that we could put this together. And then everything else would, because I, I knew Doug was such, so anally retentive <laughs> uh, that he would work, because I saw his work on Merchant of Venice, that he would be meticulous about putting this product together. And then this is the result we had. So, so Bullshit, Brian. <laughs> All right. You were you were the right guy in the right place and at the right time, and you're not too old uh, for it. And, and I think and I think it, it, it was it was it exceeded what I hoped it would do. Uh, and so that's that's what I'm really happy about. Well, oh, fair enough. Yeah, well, not fair enough. You're welcome. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. I, yeah. I, I I do appreciate that. In fact, it was um, you know when I started talking to Doug about it a little later, I had the same uh, I had the same concern. But I started looking up actually the ages when um, uh, a bunch of people made their most noteworthy Hamlets, and um, uh, in fact, uh, Olivier was forty, right. uh, Brenna was thirty eight. Right. Uh, he he got an early start though. Um, Derek Jacoby uh, was forty, uh, which um, you know I I, I appreciated Jacoby uh, uh, if, if we're in McClendon. Uh, <laughs> I, I started started going down the list of, of all these of all these Hamlets. So, you know, Alan Rickman was forty six when he played Hamlet, but then again, you know he's, he's Alan right. Rickman. But <laughs> still, I was like, okay, you know what? Fine. Uh, I think uh, I think Sarah Bernhardt was continued playing Hamlet until she was well into her fifties. So. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, that, that somewhat eased my mind. Not that I'm comparing myself in any way, shape, or form to Sarah Bernhardt. But, I am in know, no way, shape, or form like Sarah Bernhardt. You think, right Ryan, uh, if, you, if you looked like me with my hairline mm -hmm. okay, and my paunch, and I, said, I wouldn't have cast you, but you look like you. You see what I'm saying? And so you, you, <laughs> have, you, you look young and, and able to pull it off. Believe me. No, I, you're being way too self-deprecating. You were absolutely the right leading man for the part. You know, there's oh, no yeah, question about that. Um, the, uh, so um, I, have a, I have a Hamlet story. I know I'm, I'm eating a lot of time, but I, I don't know if I told you the story. I've been to Elsinore. Oh, wow. Yeah. I have been to Elsinore. I, I, I was in Denmark, and it's actually not Elsinore, uh, but people like to, it's, it's Helsinar, uh, but they've anglicized it to make it Elsinore. So the city decided to say, well, we can maybe make a tourist thing out of this. So they had right. uh, this particular castle, and they said, this is, this is Hamlet's castle. We have no evidence that it's Hamlet's castle. But Laurence Olivier, when he was 35 or so, decided he would come here as a stunt and do a show in the courtyard. And... Mm -hmm. 
it, and then almost every famous Hamlet did it every year ever since then uh, in this little courtyard. Uh, and there's all these wonderful photos of, there's Richard Burton, there's even uh, Jude Law, Kenneth Branagh, uh, uh, John Gielgud, they're all there in that particular courtyard. I heard really good things about the Jude Law Hamlet. I never got my hands on a copy of it, though. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah there, there, there isn't one, as far as I know. Anyway, I've consumed too much time. Did I go? No, it's fine. Um, uh, I actually had the chance to, to look it up. Papa Estiedu, that's his name. Ah, what? Right. Papa actually, Estiedu. Doug, wasn't it, wasn't it Jean who uh, showed us the video of that? Uh, well, I had already seen it, but yeah, she was. Oh, okay. Uh, Dean Arnold, our... our Beautiful, fantastic Gertrude uh, from, oh, uh, from this uh, this Hamlet. Uh, if you're watching, turned this, us on to uh, uh, that 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 performance of, of mm -hmm. Hamlet. As a matter of she fact, saw it live. She, she, she saw it there. Uh, yeah, I know, I know. Uh, which I'm sure um, about the experience because he was talking about your dynamic Hamlet. Yeah. Oh, it, incredible, incredible! Yeah. Uh, she insisted that we watch the that version of the Hamlet Ophelia scene. I think. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Um, Great. Right. So, yeah, yeah. I have a question for you. Sure. Uh, we're putting this thing together. Uh, everyone approaches it from a certain target, certain vision, yeah. mm -hmm. certain kind of way that you want to try to tell the story. Mm -hmm. What was your elevator speech? Ah, okay. And I'll give uh, you, I'll give you the building and 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 the body. Yeah, yeah, the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. Um, so. Over the centuries, uh, I mean, it's, if you take the entire text that we have, the amalgam of uh, Q2 and, and First Folio, it's a beast of a play. It's huge. Um, and over the centuries, there have been various fashions for, you know, make it just a revenge tragedy or make it, uh, I think the current fashion seems to be make it just a family drama. And it was really important to me to, to not do that, to keep as many of the various genres that it encompasses uh, intact as we could. Um, and in fact, the first thing uh, that was my sort of jumping in point for the text was uh, the statement, when the people of the state are in chaos, the state is in chaos. I don't know if you can find modern relevance for that. Uh, it's but, a stretch. It's a stretch, exactly, really. Exactly. Yeah. But that was because you know, Denmark <clears throat> part through the course of this of this play, and it was in trouble before this play ever started. Uh, and so it was very important to me because uh, I also wanted to leave it important to us. Everybody cuts for it. So I, I, I really wanted to leave important to us because I think that's a very important element. Um, so I really wanted it to have that stakes, not just for these people, but for the entire country of Denmark. And so to really help audiences appreciate the sweep and the scope of this massive story, um, or, you know, paring it down somewhat, um, to try to keep it uh, flowing. At a, at a, at a, we did about 75% of the original text and it was yeah, still three hours, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think, I, I totally agree with Brenna. You have to leave those things in because that's the only way you get the pacing. I mean, Shakespeare knew what he was doing. Right? You have those moments to breathe in between the, the, the really breakneck action pieces. Uh, so I, it's important to leave that stuff and the humor and all this stuff. And so I really wanted to do as much of it as we could possibly fit into a reasonable running time. So that's really where I where I started and where I came from. Okay. Oh, so we could we could go on, especially in this group, we could go on talking about this Shakespeare in general and. and this particular play and this particular production all night, but we're already asking people to uh, to sit uh, for a three-hour film, so I don't want this to the preliminary to. to... But the uh, but Doug, the concise version of like the when and where of it, right? And how? Yeah, exactly. Like like what 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 what's the particulars of like this Hamlet is set in? Well, we did we we set it in the 1950s. Uh, I think a lot, a couple of reviewers thought it was modern, but it was, this is the 1950s. Um, we had originally wanted to go with the 1910s, but that's very hard to costume and. Uh, you know, so, why did you decide? Uh, why did you decide uh, to go, for lack of a better term, modern or 20th century? 
Um, because, well, one, it's easier to costume. I mean, if we had the access to the costume room at the Stratford Festival, we could do it, but we don't. Um, so, plus, you know, I think, I think there are enough uh, stereotypes about Hamlet as the guy who runs around in tights moping over skulls that I think it's important to bring this to a modern audience in a modern way. Uh, and I wanted to push it as late as we could uh, and still have reasonable things like, why don't they have cell phones? Because that doesn't work in the Ethan Hawke version. Uh, right? And, um, you know, why are they still, why is sword fighting still something that soldiers would actually learn uh, in addition to being just a sport? Um, and so I was looking originally to go with the 1910s, which is right before uh, Europe sort of fell apart. Uh, into, into fascism and all of that. Uh, as it turns out, we ended up with the 1950s, which is right after all that, which is still, you know, we're placing it inside this power vacuum. Inc uh, Europe is resorting itself after the war, and here comes Fortinbras, the conqueror, who's going to take over this. Setting it against that kind of a backdrop is, is for us. Okay. Oh, yeah, I just, I really agree with you because having done so many Shakespeare shows, I like the sword fights. I think the sword fights are fun. They add a lot of fun for the audience. And if you go way too modern, like I remember I was involved with the Henry V production and they decided to do it Vietnam era. And so everyone had M16s and uh, it was, it, it, and I, I know what they were trying to do, but but it just lost some of the romance of, of it, you know, uh, when you have hand grenades and mortar fire and, and things along that line. Uh, so I like it when, you know, there's this wonderfully classic sword fight in Hamlet and and I, I would hate that, and you didn't, I would hate that you costume yourself out of a reasonableness to have that particular fight. Yeah. And well, the great thing about that one is that it is a sporting match, right? So, right. you know, you, you, you're a lot, you can go a lot farther with that one because in terms of time because so, yes it was something they learned be because of the military but it, that is set up right it's supposed to be a sporting match so it was, yeah and of course we went with uh Mensur, which was fun it was very clever it was very well done uh that was that was our fight choreographer eric bryant's idea it also played our claudius uh, yep. i thought it was just glorious it looked so good <laughs> to have the uh the Mensur gear and the, and the jacket on it which was um, germanic uh Fraternal sword fighting, where the whole point was to get facial scars. Let me ask you, Brian. Um, I, I, I've always enjoyed uh, your ability to take really long Shakespearean monologues and 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 make them understandable. To have the right breaths and pauses, to be able to someone you know. For example, my wife is not fond of Shakespeare. She doesn't like to go. Uh, mainly because she has seen for many years people this bungle of speeches and it all sounds like garbage to her, you know, with it, or, or just boring. And when it's done really well... We've like, all been there. Yeah, and when it's done really well, which is what you do, uh, it's, it's terribly compelling. Um, but one of the things about Hamlet, it, there's six monologues in Hamlet, I think I count right, uh, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of go through the play. There's six major speeches. Seven, yeah. uh, Seven arguably. Well, seven. Okay, um, and you kind of want to memorize them all. How do you, mm -hmm. how 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 did you in your process make sure that I'm not just using my particular uh, supporting cast to get to that next monologue? You see what I'm saying? How, in other words, how do you how did you use your supporting cast to be able to tell the story so that the in your process so that when you got to that to be or not to be monologue, it made sense as part of the story versus saying, okay, now we're going to stop the play because we're going to do a famous speech. Well, first of all, I didn't use the supporting cast. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, no, no, I, let, me, let, me, let me be, I, I realize that was ill phrased, uh, but what I'm talking about is I have seen productions of Hamlet where you get a strong Hamlet and he just tries to carry everybody through with him like a train, you know, with it, and, and the supporting cast really doesn't get a chance to develop their particular characters, to develop their particular pieces, to, 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 to support this underlying story. It's just Hamlet, 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 Hamlet all 
way through. And one of the things I thought was genius about this particular play is that you had such a wide supporting cast of really strong actors that all had, I, I, I think of Tony, you know, for one, uh, the uh, uh, strong stories that are there that you had an opportunity as Hamlet to support their stories. You see what I'm talking about? And to tell, to-, to oh, That's a much better word than use. <laughs> it was inartful, and this is my second Zoom meeting tonight, so give me a break. <laughs> it's an ill <laughs> phrase, a vile phrase. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the, uh, you know, that's one thing I really particularly enjoyed about, about the show is that uh, it isn't just about Hamlet. There's a lot of great stories that all revolve around this central character. And I was wondering in your process in rehearsal, how did you work to develop that? A long way of saying that, but that's where I was going. Well, I mean, um, yeah, no, I mean, uh, if, if you're just, um, and which is one of the reasons, which is one of the very good, um, things about the, the fact that uh, Doug was so judicious about uh, the, the edit of the script. I may or may not have had a hand in that. Um, you did. <laughs> um, Take your credit. But uh, in, in fact, I was more merciless. Uh, Doug and I worked together on adapting the script. Uh, it was mostly Doug's work. I, I came in and, and, and reviewed some drafts here. and there. I was more merciless about cutting my own lines than about anybody else's. Um, because you know, if you uh, if you slash it too far, you're just watching a guy talking to himself for uh, you know a couple of hours. So that's kind of um, kind of what I was driving at, yeah. And uh, that that's not what this play is about. Um, and uh, honestly, you know, when you've got a cast uh, that's this a bench that this that's this deep, I mean, there's not a weak link in the cast. Um, I won't try to go through the litany of names because I'll inevitably forget somebody. But um, but there's a there's such a wealth in everybody, everybody, every single individual in this cast, um, you know, brings themselves uh, to the character. And so all I had to do was show up uh, and play with them, play off of them. Uh, play around them um, and every single person in this cast is a lead actor in their own right I mean uh, I don't think there's a I don't think there's a person in this cast who couldn't carry a play by themselves uh, given the right uh, given the right material um, and uh, and so really all I had to do was show up be present listen uh, to my castmates and adjust accordingly um, I've had one or two opportunities to audition for other productions of Hamlet in which, uh, let's just say they were either companies or, um, you know, individuals that I, I didn't, uh, have full trust in, nor did I, uh, have the, uh, uh, the trust that they, they build a supporting cast, um, around it, even you know, with the enormous presumption that I could ad ad audition and actually get the role off Hamlet. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it simply wouldn't be worth it um, if I were trying to make it all about me. Um, you know, the, the, the fun of acting is in reacting. Uh, to other people in in making yourself emotionally available to others um, and to the audience in a way uh, that uh, you just can't do in any other medium and so you know you, you want to know about the process mostly it was about uh, you know doing doing the lines uh, you know enough so I knew them cold so that I just had those uh, and could then just play off of whatever I was given uh, yeah. by, by the remainder of this amazing cast. Yeah. Uh, it's just like, you know, uh, you know, Larry Bird, uh, you know, going to the gym, uh, you know, at six o'clock in the morning and shooting free throws for a couple of hours, um, you know, just so that he could have that fundamental skill fundamental piece of his game down so that he didn't even have to think about it and could focus on being the best player he could with his teammates uh, in the moment uh, of the game. And that, that's exactly 
what you do when you've got this, these massive chunks of words to work with. Um, yes, of course, I put a great deal of thought into how I would interpret certain things, but some of that went entirely out the window when I got into the rehearsal room with some of my uh, fellow actors because they brought things that I did not expect. Right. Um, and so you've got to be ready for that. Otherwise, you know, you're just acting near people and not with people. And I've been so on stage with actors like that, and it's not fun. Uh, so have I. We all have. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I, this, I mean, I know we have just you here to represent the cast because you know, in production of Hamlet, as you say uh, earlier, Glenn, you know, it's, it's about Hamlet, but it also isn't. Um, and we had such, such a group, and everybody just threw their all into this. You know, everybody brought their age. As it were. Um, and, and we worked very hard in the rehearsal room to focus on all the different relationships, ones that didn't involve Hamlet at all. Yeah, um, and there's quite a few scenes that Hamlet just isn't even in. Right. Yeah, but Most the, of Act Four, as a matter of fact. The thing, I, the thing I, I really appreciate what you both are saying, and I think that's what makes this particular show so good, is that Brian, as, as, as giant of an actor as you are, uh, it would be really, and, and your performance reflected that, it, it would be really easy to just focus all the attention on you and not pay attention to uh, uh, Horatio or not pay attention to, to uh, some of the other characters in the show. But one of the things that you did is you, you, because you had such a command of the particular script, you were able to respond to them and change and, and they became part of the story. And you took what was a, a pretty good Hamlet to a great Hamlet because of them. You know, because of them being strong in their particular roles, it just elevated you up to even a higher level, I think. Um, so I, I, I applaud that. I, I always pay attention to supporting characters whenever I go to a show, because if you've got a good supporting cast, you've got a good show. You know, with it, oh. and I, I, I think, <laughs> I think you showed that immeasurably. I saw the show three times, and your show was different the third time because I could see how you were changing it based on the strength of the way people were acting opposite next to you. You were modulating your speeches, the way you responded to them, some of your emotional uh, uh, choices that you were making were a little different because the show was growing and changing with this very good cast. And that's, you know, Doug talked about watching the show, this panel before going to see the show. I think that's what I would encourage people to pay attention to is not only the brilliance of the way that you, you know, one of the reviewers said a, a masterclass in acting of what you did, uh, but also the way all of these people, um, all of this enormous cast brought, as you said, their A game and supported the entire show. If you had a bad grave digger, you know, with it, it would have just stuck out, you know, with it. It would have yeah, the story it, it would've, come to a grinding halt. It would have come to a grinding halt. You would have to wait until Hamlet got back on stage in order to, and, and they were just as entertaining and engaging of scenes, uh, even when Hamlet wasn't on the stage. Well, you, uh, yeah, the show opens with, uh, you know, Bernardo and Marcellus and, and Horatio. Yeah, um, and they're terrific. And, 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 and they set the tone. Right. Um, you know, and, and, if you, and if you can't grab people with them, then, 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 then you're lost before Hamlet ever gets on stage. I agree. Um, and, and, and that's what's so great about the show is you've got really great supporting cast. That's what's really terrific. Well, on that note, we've gone uh, longer than I anticipated we would uh, by quite a bit already. But uh, I think that's a great note on which to encourage people to, to stop listening to us and, and go watch the show. Um, yeah, please. Thank please. you both. So if you much haven't stopped it already, just stop it and go watch the show. It's <laughs> well, you can let us wrap up, um, and then go watch the show. Uh, okay, well, fair enough. Well, let me thank let you me, both so much for joining. Uh, let me say one thing. Doug. I just want to I just want to offer congratulations to both of you uh, for a really fine, fine production uh, in you. history of Bardfest, which I hope goes on for quite a while this show is going to be ranked as one of the ones to remember. And uh, I appreciate both of your hard work. Uh, it's a tremendous show. I, I, I hope everybody watches it. I really do. Thank you so much. And that, that, that's oh. coming from someone who directed it himself a couple of years before. So. 
<laughs> Thank you so much. I, I appreciate that, Flynn, and, and, and I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to get it out there um, and uh, give some opportu uh, opportunities to uh, to people who didn't get to see it, uh, people who, uh, mm -hmm. you know, who can't get to Indianapolis, uh, you know, who wanted to uh, see it, uh, et cetera, to, uh, to, to have a look at it. Absolutely. So. Thank you both. Thank you so much. Yep. Yep. Go watch the show. Thank you.